I made this easy to use, easy to assemble op amp breakout board with today's sponsor PCB Way to allow plugging it into a breadboard for fast access to an inverting op amp when one is suddenly needed and this eliminates some of the hassle of digging out parts. And this can be used if you need to quickly just provide some gain on a signal or if you want to level shift a signal and change the offset or if you just want to buffer a signal from one circuit to another on the breadboard, you found that maybe one circuit was being loaded down by a different one, so you can throw an op amp in there. And I also have summing resistors on here, so I have three inputs that can optionally be summed together for a simple, fast mixer. On board, I also have an ICL7660 to generate a negative voltage rail when the breadboard gives positive 4 to positive 10 volts in. So we have a plus and minus supply available to the op amp, and along with the output, I provide a pin to get access to that negative voltage rail. I chose to rate the input power supply between 4 and 10 volts, even though you could use the A version of the chip and get up to 12 volts, and you could technically go down as low as 1.5 volts, but I wanted to leave this LV pin on the chip floating so I don't have to worry about remembering to jumper it to ground if I want to go below 3.5 volts in. So I just stuck with 4 to 10 should definitely be achievable no matter which chip I put in the socket. It's a relatively simple schematic. There's the header pins, plus 4 to plus 10 volts as a power supply with ground come into these pins. The plus rail goes to the ICL7660, generates a minus version of that supply rail, and the plus and minus power supply will go to the op amps as well as the negative rail can be used on the breadboard if wanted. So here the LV pin is just unconnected, which is why I rate this as minimum 4 volts in to be safe. The output of the op amp goes to the header. Three inputs go to the summing resistors if I want more than one input. Otherwise, the gain is adjusted with this 100k pot in the feedback loop. So when this pot is adjusted all the way to minimum resistance, we don't want a short circuit, so I arbitrarily chose to put 4.7k up to 100k plus 4.7k in the feedback loop. So the minimum gain, that would be minus 4.7k over 10k, or close to minus 0.5, which is attenuation of the signal. The maximum gain would be 104.7k. Let's just round it to 100k over 10k, which is a gain of minus 10. And in case I wanted to do any level shifting to provide an offset plus or minus, I just put another 100k pot across the V plus and V minus rails. So I would set this in the middle to give zero volts if I did not want any offset, and I can just play around with that as needed. And that gives me just a quick way to hook up an op amp. Of course, this negative voltage generator IC is going to have some degree of small output ripple voltage. So with that negative voltage and its ripple going to the op amp supply and being used as part of my reference, it may introduce a little noise or distortion, depending how I have it set. But this is just meant to be a quick and dirty little prototyping circuit just to test out something on a breadboard. A more proper circuit suited for the application can always be designed after. Using a bench supply, I adjusted it between plus 4 and plus 10 and verified I was getting minus 4 to minus 10 on the negative rail, so that works. And now, just to keep everything cleaner, I'm using a 9 volt battery, so there's no power supply switching noise. And I have the board plugged into a breadboard, and I have two signal generators. I'm only using one right now. And on the scope, the blue channel 3 trace is one of the sine wave inputs, and the green channel 4 is the overall op amp output. The sine wave is set for 1 kilohertz and 1 volt peak to peak, and both channels are 500 millivolts per division, so we have a total of 1 volt 
peak to peak, and this is our ground line. So we are going positive and negative, input and output. Just to quickly test the summing capability, I'll turn on a second sine wave generator channel, and as I change the frequency, we can see the green output trace is combining the fixed blue sine wave with this increasing frequency new sine wave being summed in with it. Now I just turned it off so there's only the main sine wave coming in and the inverted version coming out. So if I adjust the gain trim pot, considering there's a fixed resistor, I can only reduce the gain a certain amount. So then if I go and increase the gain and change the scale, there's the gain trim pot at maximum, and it doesn't look like we started clipping at any of the rails because our sine wave input is probably small enough to avoid clipping. So if I increase the input sine wave, which will also increase the output sine wave, now we started clipping and distorting, and the top of our output sine wave is 7.2 volts. So we're running into the power supply max combined with a little lost output from the non-rail-to-rail -rail LM358. I'll bring the input back down to 1 volt peak-to-peak, -peak, reduce the gain again on this op-amp, go back to about 1 to 1, and now I'll change the offset. So I'll change the scale so I can just move this around and fit the whole thing on screen. That's where I start running into the maximum. It starts to clip right up here. Again, it's a 7.2 volt top of the waveform. So if I try to zoom in on this, that's what happens when we adjust the offset high enough to get to the max voltage rail. So around 7 volts is the highest we can get out of this op amp still. So now if I get this fitting on the screen again, so our 0 volt line is here. Now I'm shifting down into the negative side, and we ran into the bottom rail. So just zooming in on the waveform as I bring it to the bottom rail so we can see it gets down to there, and then it just is going to clip. I added the measurement, so it's minus 7.5 volts right there. So that just shows we can shift the offset around and do what we need to do if we don't want it centered at zero. Overall, this breadboard pin compatible op-amp breakout board is going to be a useful tool to have on the workbench.